Hey, what's going on? This is Junior from sandjackknives.com. Thought I'd do a little bit of a kind of a video on some heat treating. This is one of the ways that I use. Uh, it, well, for carbon steels, it's the main method that I use, especially if I'm wanting to differentially heat treat a blade. So, just the first thing I'll point out. This is 1084. This is one of my Bowie. This is the Bowie knife that's going to be in one of my Journeyman Smith blades, and. One thing I'll point out is that I heat treat my blades when they're pretty thin. I don't really do a finish grinding. Um, most of my finish grinding is just cleaning up my plunge lines and things. But I grind really, really thin. And I'll show you back here at the Ricasso. I'm about 25 thousandths here. And out at the tip, it's a little bit thicker. It's about 45 thousandths, which is pretty, pretty thin at the heat treating. Now, most people say, well, you can't heat treat, the, heat treat that thin because you're going to get a lot of warpage or you're going to decarburize your steel and things like that. Well, that's true if you don't prepare for that, but I'm prepared for that. So I'm going to show you a little bit different method. This is kind of a variation on, one of the, on, a, on, a, on a way that I was, I was taught from a, a friend of mine, Master Smith, Greg Neely, which basically it allows you to grind your blades thinner prior to heat treating so that you don't have to do much afterwards. I've kind of touched on that before. So to kind of show you where I'm at right now, the first thing I'm going to do, this blade has been normalized, it has been annealed, and it's been ground, but we're going to do a couple cycles of normalizing once we get this all together. We're going to do a basically a satanite coating on the tang because I want to keep the tang soft. The rest of the blade we're going to coat with the Brownells uh, anti-scaling compound, and then we're going to go back and we're going to do a little bit, of, a little more satanite along the spine, uh, basically as sort of our clay hardening. You don't really have to do that if you manage your temperature time and your soak time, because if you've got thinner steel, remember that heat treating is all about three things time, temperature, and thickness. We always talk, talk about time and temperature, but we leave out thickness. So time and temperature with this thin of steel, if I soak it about five or six minutes, I'm only going to be hardened on my edge portion. So I can quench that and I'm still going to have a hamon. I'm still going to have differential heat treatment. But if I really want that hamon to pop, then I'm going to use some clay hardening with it. I've had really good results with satanite. This is just a little mixture in a cup here with just some water. And I like to get it into a really consistent yogurt type consistency. And I'm only coating my tang with this. And the reason is, is because I want to make sure that this gets super, super hard. I mean, I'm sorry. I want it to stay soft. Um, and I don't put it on the rest of the blade yet because once this dries, this satanite here on the tang dries, and you want to make sure that you're, that you're pretty even all the way around. You don't want any high spots or low spots. What I'm going to do now, once this hardens um, for a couple of hours, I'm going to take the blade, we're going to go to the heat treating oven, and I'm going to coat this with a Brownells all along the all along the Ricasso, all the way out through the blade. What that's going to do is it's going to it's going to stop my de decarburation and it's going to prevent any scale buildup. And if there is any scale left after that, if I've got a thin spot on there, it'll come off really easy on some boiling water. I'll show you that part too. So if you'll notice, I've left about an inch here at the end of my tang because I just want enough area to that doesn't have the the clay on it to hold with my tongs when it goes in and out of the oven. So I'm going to show you every step that I go through on this. It's a pretty simple method, pretty easy to follow. So for right now, I've got this tang coated pretty good, pretty even with satanite. So I'm going to cut this off and let this harden. All right, so after about, I guess maybe two and a half hours, the uh, satanite is now hard. So it's dried out. It's, it's a little bit... You can still take tell a little bit of moisture in it, but for the most part, it's it's not gooey or milky anymore. So now we're going to take it over to the uh, furnace and start putting the uh, anti-scaling compound on. Okay, so I keep my uh, my non-scaling compound in this sort of uh, metal cooking tray here, cooking pan. So I've got the blade here, and you can see where the tang has got the satanite on it. So what I'm going to do, and I'm not going to show that part just to save time, 
but this stuff melts at about five six hundred degrees and you see it's just kind of this gray boride based powder and so what I'm going to do is I'm going to put the blade in the oven and I'm going to put it in at about 500 degrees. I'm going to let it heat up to about 1,000. And that's going to give me, you know, probably a good 30, 45 seconds or so, if not a minute, where it'll be at the melting temperature. So it gives me enough time to cover a blade of this size. We've got this, you know, pretty good size buoy here. So what you basically do is with, you know, you just kind of hold it and you just sprinkle this stuff on here kind of lightly and this stuff's going to kind of start to smoke and melt and it turns into this black goo all over the blade and you want to cover it to where you see no metal parts at all and because if you if you have any exposed metal then that means you can get oxygen to the blade and it's going to it's going you're going to get scale there the way this stuff works is it prevents oxygen from getting to the actual uh, the actual steel itself. So what we'll do is we're going to cover all of this exposed metal, the ricasso and the blade, the spine, and most importantly the edge. And I might you know kind of run this through there like that so that I can get all that over there. And then once that's coated, I'm going to sit it up here in my stand here, and I'm going to let that cool down, and I'm going to let the whole thing come back down to room temperature. And then once it comes down to room temperature, then we're going to put the another satanite coating across the spine to do the uh, the clay coating so that we get a, a good differential heat treatment. So uh, I'm going to go ahead and get the oven fired up, and I'll show you what that looks like. Okay, um, the one thing I forgot to mention is that before I did this on the blade, on the exposed steel, I went through with some 90 90% uh, alcohol, uh, isopropyl alcohol, and I wiped everything down to get all the oils and smudges and off of it and everything because if you don't do that, then this stuff, it will stick to it, but you have difficulty getting it off in certain places. So that's the part I didn't remember. So I forgot to mention that. So make sure you clean off the blade really good before you do this. So my oven is right almost at 1,000 degrees. So I'm going to go ahead. I'm not going to talk during this, so you're just going to have to watch. But uh, I'm, I'm going to be wearing a mask because this stuff gets kind of smoky and I don't want to be breathing it in. So, with that, go ahead and do this. Mask up real quick. Okay, so that's basically the blade, that black and gray goopy mess right there. Where's it at? There we go. So what I'll do, since I've got a few spots that didn't melt, I'm going to go ahead and put it back in the oven for just a few minutes to go ahead and let all that melt. And then I'm going to let this come down to room temperature. And that's, step one, that's basically that step. 
Okay, so for this next step, I'm going to show you the um, what I call either the normalizing or conditioning steps that I use to, to get the blade ready to harden and quench. Um, I've already done, I'll show you step by step at the end of this, I'll write it all down so you can see the steps, but this blade has already had a formal thermal cycling and normalizing after the forging process. Um, even, I mean, after the forging process, before I start to grind and all that kind of stuff, it's gone through that. This is sort of, I guess you could say, kind of removing the stresses from the grinding process, as well as getting the steel, getting the grain refinement, getting the grains refined, ready to harden. Um, because, like I said, I, I grind my blades a lot thinner than most, and there's a lot of reasons for that. The, the main thing is it's just a time saver. Um, I find that I've worked out a process to where I can grind my blades thinner and heat treat them and still get good hardness and uh, still get good performance. No decarburation to speak of. Um, like I said, plenty of performance and I'm not having any issues with warping. And what this does is it saves me overall time in the process because when I'm doing the majority of my grinding or all of my grinding, it's actually being done when the steel is in the hardened state because I don't like to mess with hardened steel. Now my grinder doesn't have a problem with it, the belts don't have a problem with it, but it's just a pain. Um, it, you just can't get as much done, you don't make the move. It's hard to get good crisp lines when you're, when you're doing a lot of grinding on hardened steel. It's just, it's just, it's just tough. So what I like to do is, by the time I heat treat, the, 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 the main grinding and metal removal is done. Once I get done with my heat treating process and hardening and tempering, all I'm really doing at that point is just sort of uh, cleaning up grind lines and scratches. I'm removing scratches and putting on the finish uh, at that point. There's no uh, bulk metal removal other than maybe you know refining the tang or refining the spine a little bit. Um, but after that, it's, it's pretty much all handwork um, for the most part. So I'll show you how we do this next step. But to do this, I want you to see the color. So just to kind of give you a recap of what, what we're going to see here is I've got my oven heating up right now to right at the critical temp where I like to quench at is about 1500 degrees. This is 1084, like I said. So we're going to heat the blade up to uh, 1500. The way I do it is I wait until the oven is up to temp before I put the blade in there. I don't like to let it sit in there for too long. That's one of the things that can cause grain growth and also cause you warpage because you're overheating things. So I'm gonna, as soon as my oven gets to 1500 and the alarm goes off, I'm gonna put the blade in there and I'm gonna start my timer for five minutes. Now, keep in mind, when I say I'm going to set the timer for five minutes, I'm going to set the timer for five minutes when the oven comes back up to temp. Because the time it takes me to open it up and put the blade in there, it's going to drop about 60 or 70 degrees. So I've got to let it come back up to temp, and that's when I'm going to start my timer for five minutes. So it's going to soak for five minutes, then I'm going to pull the blade out, and I'm going to let it sit in air, and I'm going to show you it's all going to be done in dark. So when, you, when I go to the next scene and it's all dark in here, nothing's wrong with your computer. Everything's fine, it's just the lights are off because I want you to see the color. And I'm going to pull the blade out and you're going to see the color drop all the way until the blade completely blacks out. And as soon as it completely blacks out, I'm going to go back into the oven and I'm going to do the same exact thing three times. But on the third time, after the third time, I'm going to let the blade completely cool back down to room temperature. And once it's down to room temperature, then we're going to excuse me. We're going to go back and we're going to uh, redo the tang with the Satan knife, and we're going to do the clay coating to get ready for that final quench. Now I'm not going to do all three steps on here because it's just to save save time. So when I do this one normalizing uh, procedure, just extrapolate that to two extra times. So let's get started on that. All right. So the oven is now at the temp. You can hear the alarm going off. So we're going to go ahead and put this in here. So that dropped at about 
75 degrees. So I'm going to let this oven come back up to temp real quick. Okay, so now we're going to take it out and I'm let the temperature drop. We're watching the color here. We want it to basically fade to black. Take this over here. And this would be the exact same temperature that I would quench at. Very important when you do this that you do it in low light conditions so you can really see your colors well. A lot of times if it's if you've got too much light it can kind of cause you to think that uh, things aren't as hot as they would like to. And here's an important thing that I want to show you. You see where it's getting black along the edge and not the rest? Okay, well that same exact thing happens whenever this steel heats up. So because of the fact that we had thinner steel at the edge, the edge steel got hotter faster, which is why you don't necessarily need to soak it for that long. So this exact same thing happens in reverse when your steels, which is why when some folks tell you, well, you got to soak it for 20 or 30 minutes, they're talking about pieces of steel that are much, much thicker than what we use in knife making. As you can see, I've still got a little bit of color here. You can't see it in the camera, but I've got just a little bit of cherry here in the spine. But uh, yeah, that was a really cool view there. That way you could see how fast that edge actually does heat. I mean, how, how fast it does cool down. Again, the exact opposite happens when you heat it up. When it goes into the oven, it rapidly heats up, which is why a five to seven minute soak when you've got a 25 to a 50 thousandths edge is plenty for pretty much any steel that you're working with. It doesn't take that much time to heat up, which is exactly what happens when you don't necessarily, even though I'm gonna use a, a, a clay hardening, a clay coating on this to get a really good hamon on this, you don't really have to do that if you, if you uh, have your edge thickness thin enough because of the fact that it's going to only, the, st the only steel that's going to reach the critical temperature is going to be your edge. So when you quench it, even without the clay hardening on there, the clay coating, you'll still get a certain amount of hamon on this 1084 just because of the area of the steel that was hardened or, and that heated up because it was thinner. So now what I'm going to do, that was the first time, so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go back into the oven for two more cycles. more time. Watch that edge again this time. Pretty cool stuff. Alright, so this was the third time. I skipped one section, but just remember, I will have done this exact same step three times. Right at critical temperature, which for me is at 1500 degrees. If you're doing it, at, if you're using a forge to do your heat treating, you can do the same thing. Just make sure that right past critical temp, you go ahead and pull it out. So using, using a magnet is probably going to be your best way to do that. So now that all the heat's come out of that, I'm going to go ahead and sit this on my rack and let it cool down to room temp. Okay, so we're, uh, we've normalized it three times. So I've got some more satanite mixed up here. So I'm gonna start doing my, my clay coating on here. And I'm gonna go back to redoing the tang because this obviously most of this will fall off coming in and out because once it hardens, it gets really brittle. So you kind of need to redo it. And you see this black portion, that's the, uh, the, that's the, hard, that's the uh, anti-scaling compound. It's still on there. It does not come off until you quench or until you boil it in water. So it's on there. 
So I'm going to kind of paint this on. I like to do it pretty thick. About maybe, I don't know, probably 3 sixteenths or so thick. Uh, that's probably a little much, maybe 5 30 seconds, something like that. I like to leave it pretty thick. I'm going to paint this stuff up. You can do different designs and stuff if you want to. I don't really like to do that because I, I just I just don't. I guess I'm not that creative. I kind of like the way you know. The thing is, is that all I'm really doing this for is I just want to make sure that the spine of my of my knife stays soft. That's it's really a functional thing rather than visual because the reality is. It doesn't really matter if I put the uh, the clay on there or not. I'm still going to get a hamon down here along where um, where the edge is because that's the thinner steel. So it's gonna it's gonna show a, a, a temper line because that area is going to get much harder than the rest of it because it's the only portion that's really going to be at critical temp. But that being said, you can get a certain amount of air hardening along the spine even if it doesn't really get to, to critical temp and that's it's not really that imperative with something like 5160 because it's such a flexible steel anyway but with 1084 you really need to watch it because this stuff does get hard So that's one side right there. Turn this around. One thing you want to make sure you do, if you're going to take time on this, doing this, try to make sure that you get your, your clay thickness the same on each side. That will definitely help cut down on warping. We're not going to get any, I feel confident we're not going to get any warping in this at all, but if you're if you're struggling with that one of the things that caught the main thing that causes warpage is unevenness whether it means uh, you've got one side of your steel hotter than the other which can happen if, it, if you've got it too close to one of your burners as opposed to the other and you're not moving it around you can have some issues with that if you haven't done your rough grind evenly enough and you've got thicker portions of your steel in different places you can have the same sort of thing happen. So you want to make sure that you get everything uniform as you can. And that includes this clay. If I've got a thicker coating on one side than the other, then the heat is going to penetrate deeper on one side than the other. So when I quench it, it's going to want to pull to one side. And so you want to watch that. That can cause you issues. So I'll take this and I'll, I'll put this coating and then I'll kind of double check both sides to see if I'm in the ballpark. And I like to flatten this out too. I'm not trying to do it to, to be pretty, but if you've got these little mountains and valleys through here, same concept. You've got temper, you've got the heat that's going to be penetrating at different depths. And so you want everything to be kind of uniform across here. So put a good coating on it and then kind of level it all out. Tricky part of this is to get the bottom of that tang once you've got all this other goop on there. Try to get the bottom of that ricasso too. I don't want that getting hard. I want that to stay soft. Now again, I've got another step on here that we're going to do once we're done with this to, I guess you could call it sort of a double or triple check to make sure that that portion is, is our tang stays soft and our spine stays soft. We're going to actually go through and we're going to heat it up a little bit with a torch. Sorry, you couldn't really see what I was doing there. I apologize on that. So that's it. And of course, I just got a big glob on there. Way to go. I would not have done that if I hadn't been filming, but it is what it is. Cover that back in there. Alright, so now what I'm going to do is sit here and let this 
dry off. I gotta get that clump out of there. So I'm gonna let this dry, let it harden up, and then this is ready to heat treat.